Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. I am Sasha, and I have Wendy, and it's going to be a great day. Uh, we're starting a couple minutes late. Got to love technology, but we are here, and we're going to talk about some really, really, really cool stuff. Now, I'm going to start out by explaining uh, a little bit about what we're here to do. I'm also going to take a second to share it. So, guys, if you are out in the audience, if you have set up your time, you're here with us, you're watching live, uh, please feel free to share this. The more the merrier. We're going to be talking about webinars today with the amazing Wendy Hatton. Oh my gosh, you don't even know. Uh, but I do, and I'm going to share that with you. So first things first, I'm going to quickly pop over and do that whole share it with your peeps thing, because even I need to do that as the person running this thing. Uh, why? Because if you don't, hey, Facebook algorithms, might just eat your video. So I'm going to share it out to my friends. And again, guys, if you're out there, if you're watching, if you're supporting my lovely Wendy and myself, I would really, really appreciate you just taking two seconds, clicking that share button, share it with your friends. You know, they might want to see us. I want to see us. Um, my husband probably wants to see us. I mean, I'm going to assume my husband wants to see us too. Uh, so please, again, hit that share button, um, and then we're going to dive right in, and we're going to start talking about the awesome stuff that we've got set for you today. So today, we're talking with Wendy Hatton. Oh. So, Wendy, hey. thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to have you here, and I'd like you to start out by telling everybody who you are. I am. My name is Wendy Hatton, as you know, and I'm actually a business coach for coach. And so what I do is help them to attract clients. A lot of them are really resistant to the whole process. And so I, I try to help them and teach them a real compassionate ways to, to just reach out to people that they would like to work with. And it's in a non-salesy, non-pushy, non non-manipulative way. So there are different ways that you can do that. And so that's basically what I do. And I'm also a musician. Ah. <laughs> and you're a musician, which is just fantastic. So for, for all of you that may have just joined us, Wendy Hatton is a coach who trains coaches on how to get clients, especially the high-end ones, and she's phenomenal. Um, and she actually just recently did some webinars to help coaches figure out how to position themselves on LinkedIn. Uh, a couple of, a couple, several of them, absolutely fantastic things. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break that down a little bit. But again, Wendy is fantastic. If you do want to check that out, let us know. We'd be happy to share a replay with you. And otherwise, please feel free to pop over to her website, wendyhatton.com. She's fantastic. All right, let's get into the good stuff, what everybody's actually here to talk about, which is webinars, the good, the bad, and the awesome. So uh, let's see. Let's talk about your web. Whoa. Let's talk about your webinar. All right. Cool. And uh, what I want you to do is tell the audience what, whether, first of all, guys, Wendy's tried to do some webinars kind of here and there before, but this was her first real woof after a webinar. That's what she was going for. You know, this was, this was the one, the, the really hard push. So what she did was a webinar. And the webinar was to, again, teach coaches how to better position themselves on LinkedIn. So, Wendy, why don't you tell me about your webinar, why you decided to do it, uh, what your big motivation behind it was? Well, the, actually, the first thing, the first reason was because I have a Facebook group, and it's, it's full of coaches. And so that's the first requirement. You have to really have some kind of an audience where you can have, an, so you can have a webinar in the first place. So I um, posted, and with your help, and with Sasha's help, I posted a lot of uh, little, little, uh, you know, little ads. Not really ads, but <laughs> like posts that advertise the webinar coming up, and even put it over on LinkedIn, put it on Facebook, and just talking about the webinar coming up. And so that's the first step. You have to really have people who are following you and like your stuff and want to learn more from you. So that's that's how I got the people in there. So the, the very first, I did two webinars, one one week and the second one the next week. And the first one had about 28 people that registered. Yeah. Yeah. And then eight people actually came, which I was happy about because that was my very, very first one. I tried doing one a few years ago. It was for a couple friends. It was <laughs> It was really not, it was just a practice kind of a thing. 
But this particular one, I wanted to really be a really be a real the real thing. So I put together the all the content and everything. It was called through the three biggest mistakes most coaches make when looking for clients on LinkedIn. So I just went through the three sections and gave them some a bunch of content to actionable steps that they could take right away so that they're not thinking, okay, so tell me something else that I don't already know. <laughs> but so there were there were things that they actually didn't know, um, which really that was a really great feeling that I was able to to share something with these people that they didn't know anything about that I actually did know. So that meant I was the expert. And so that's the that's how they can look up to you and look to you as someone who knows how to um, how to um, succeed on LinkedIn. Uh, so I so then I went through the three the three steps and they were asking questions as I was going along and that felt really good because they didn't know the answer so they would ask me and I would actually know the answer <laughs> so that was really great so the, that was the first webinar and then the second webinar was the next week had about the same number of of registrant registrants but then there were thirteen that actually participated. So we went from eight to 13. So that was great. <laughs> um, and then the platform, there's several platforms that you can that you can use, but I discovered this newer one that's out. It's called Demio, D-E-M-I-O dot com. Um, it's great. It's 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 a pretty a pretty slow, pretty low um, cur curve, learning curve. It was pretty easy to figure out. Like some of those other ones are pretty difficult, but this one was really good. Yeah, that's it. Demio.com. Demio is so intuitive, um, like super fast. Plus, it's got some really cool features like like live replays that you can do after you've completed them, the stats. And blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you. Demio is absolutely fantastic, guys. Demio.com right on the screen. Ta -da! <laughs> right. And that is not an affiliate link. But <laughs> that's No, it's not. <laughs> Um, because I typed it in there myself. Uh, nonetheless, Demio.com, that's the, the amazing platform tool that Wendy used. And uh, I was actually there in both of them. She did an awesome job. In the first one, uh, you know, just like anybody else, doing their very first thing. There was a little bit of bumps and ups and downs. And, uh, but there's a lot of good content. And watching Wendy go through it, she really, like, built herself up and and she gained confidence and so uh that was a really really awesome thing to watch in round two you can tell that she was getting more confident even in the messaging and the way that she was approaching people that's why she got 13 instead of eight um right. and we actually i think we technically had a couple more register for the second one than the first because i didn't my none of my accounts were in there or anything so um oh that's true i, I think you did an amazing job and the, I mean, these were your first, like, real, full, legitimate webinars. I think they ran uh, close to 90 minutes. They were actually both exactly one hour and nine minutes. They were both. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Okay, and apparently Wendy is also magical, and she can just do the exact same time regardless, even though the content actually did change a bit. What I really liked about what Wendy did is some of the stuff that she had questions from in the first webinar, she answered in the second. A lot of people really liked that too. Uh -huh. So, I, I, and I think that's great. But yeah, Demio is an absolutely fantastic program and Wendy just knocked it out of the park. That being said, Let's talk a little bit about what worked and what didn't work. Now, of course, I have my opinions, but I want to hear from you because there's a lot of people out there who may be considering doing a webinar. They may never have done one before. And so it's really good for them to have insight from someone firsthand as to what really worked and what didn't. What really worked and what didn't? Let's see. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's go with the what didn't work. <laughs> um. Let's see. I think what didn't work was I I felt reluctant to do the Facebook ads, but I still tried. I attempted. I did a couple not ads, but you know when you boost the you boost your posts. I tried a couple. I tried to do that on my Facebook uh, business page, and it didn't really get very much results. Hardly any. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why. It may have been the content or what I said or it just didn't go to the right audience or something. So that didn't really work. So what really worked for me was actually going to individual people that I knew that I had actually developed a relationship with and invited them individually 
it took a little bit of extra time, but it, it made a difference because they either showed up or if they couldn't, they wanted to listen to the replay. And so since I had developed that relationship with them, they were much more willing to see what I had to say <laughs> rather than me. I guess when you have more of a following, it's the Facebook boosting works a little bit better, but just that personal, that personal touch really, really is the best thing in my opinion. So I would go to I would go to LinkedIn and then just put, send messages to people in the inbox in, over there in LinkedIn and and tell them, hey I've got I've got a webinar coming up and and the title you have to really have the title make it really enticing for people to actually want to come to the to the webinar and so so you don't even have to explain it the title tells it for your for for your yourself so they say oh wow so they click on it and they sign up because you you've had a conversation with them in the past so they know you they like you they trust you so why not hear something that you know about that you're an expert on so that's the biggest thing i think that works to get that many people for the first first two webinars i did so that was good awesome and i and i agree i do think that really really worked well for you now before we start talking about what didn't work um as well which ties right into your purpose for that whole webinar uh we have a question from the audience now do you post your webinars or do you market your webinars through youtube um mm. And it, I mean, basically, it looks like our, our audience would like to know if we have any tips or issues we ran into increasing views and engagements. Are, are you personally doing a lot on YouTube? Not yet. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I started this channel. I started a YouTube channel. It's called Sky's the Limit TV. And I'm starting to interview coaches that I meet through my in my group and then and LinkedIn. So, but it's just getting started. So I haven't really built up an audience through LinkedIn, but I would see, I would think that would be a great way to get people to your webinars too. Once you build up your, your, you, your YouTube channel, but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I haven't gotten to that point yet. <laughs> well, and I mean, from my point of view, if you put your webinar up on YouTube and it's a free web, I, I don't know if it has the same impact. Um, so I, I really like the Demio like live, but if you're having troubles finding engagement and finding viewers through YouTube, um, a lot of that has to do with the, the visual branding, things like tags. So we'd be happy to answer those questions uh, off video and give you some tips. We might even do another video for you. Uh, but let's dive into what didn't work. Um, and, and I love you so, so much. And I, I really love all the work that you did. But I actually I want to talk about it a little bit because personally, I wouldn't do a webinar now because I find that a lot of people, A, don't want to go to them. B, if they go to them, they're only there for part of the time. Yeah, it's almost impossible to get somebody to sit through an entire gosh darn webinar. And C, it's really, really hard to get them to purchase through a webinar. And of course, this is my personal opinion, um, coming from someone who doesn't generally care much for, for, web, for doing a webinar. Now, some of your experience, I think, mimicked that. So I kind of want to talk about it because uh, you you really wanted to run the webinar to help uh, find a few more coaching clients, right? That was the idea. Yeah, actually, what I was offering was a beta tester program for a LinkedIn uh, three month course for that. But for some reason, people didn't didn't buy it on that. Just for some reason, I'm not sure if it was the the price that that I quoted. It was a much slashed down um, amount that the regular program would be in in the fall. Uh, and then we could see that a lot of people went to the page, the sales page. And so we saw, a, so we had all the people that came, there were like 30 some odd, I think you said something like 30 some odd people that went to the actual sales page, but yep. they, no people <laughs> did anything. So, so that's, we're wondering if maybe it's the price or it's just, they weren't in the right place. If this wasn't the right time for them to improve their visibility on LinkedIn or not, or they felt like, I, I was also wonder if maybe I gave them too much content and they just said, okay, we're good. We're going to go do, <laughs> we're going to go do that. What you said, <laughs> you know what, uh, giving away all the content, uh, if you give them all the pieces, then yes, of course they could go. But again, I do wonder if this ties into that, uh, the, the fact that I, I don't know, we seem to be moving further away from webinars because when you had personal, like interpersonal 
relations and, and conversations with people, yeah. it seems to, to move you a lot further. Whereas, um, you know, we had folks on webinars, they watched the webinars, there's the sales pitch, the content was great, the price point was awesome, um, plus you get to be part of a beta. Uh, you got to wonder, right? What didn't work? And maybe, do you think maybe that's webinars? Good question. Although there are lots of those big, big gurus out there that are saying webinars are, are it. Like you should definitely do as many webinars as you possibly can. Um, so it's a it's a good question. There's so many nowadays. People are just inundated with webinar here, webinar there. Da, da, da. <laughs> so, well, right. I mean, how many webinars have you been to this year? Oh gosh, <laughs> at least a dozen. <laughs> Did you watch all the way through? I didn't. No, I didn't watch them all the way through. A couple, a couple of them did. Them did. Um, okay. did. Did you purchase anything from them? <laughs> Good question too. Not right at the webinar time. Later on, they had some kind of a Q and A or some kind kind of training afterwards when you got a little bit more um, value from them. That's when I, that's when I would feel more inclined. But right at the at the event of the webinar, I never actually purchased. So that's okay. It. This is good. This is good. This is what we're talking about. And I mean, even our audience, uh, Tamara, uh, she see, she's here as well. And she says that a lot of webinars are so much fluff and you don't have time to listen to their story. Now, most of these webinars, they're training you to, you know, build that connection. They need to know who you are and, and what you do. And you build that connection and building that connection helps you sell the product at the end. But then we hear for, from awesome people like Tamara, um, and even myself, I let, let's just be fair. If I sign up for a webinar, trying to get me in one is really difficult. Trying to get me to stay there longer than 10 minutes is like pulling teeth from an alligator. So I'm one of those, let's just say. Uh, but, but I mean, I really want to validate that point because a lot of the webinars out there are very formulaic. Do this, do this, do this, and you should see. But you saw that using that, that formula, part one, part two, secret step, this, this, and you really did. You you used a beautiful webinar formula, but did it convert them? I have to tell you a funny story about that. Oh, I love stories. Okay, so one of the coaches that wanted to share my the link to some of her other coach friends, um, I gave her the link, and so she wanted to look at it herself just to see what it was, because she had missed the webinar. <laughs> well, apparently she wakes up at 4 a.m. every morning and goes to bed she had gone to bed really late so so when she was talking to me back and forth uh she said she would she would watch it so so she took the she, took, she opened it and she fell asleep after like three minutes <laughs> so she didn't she didn't see any of it just the very 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 beginning and so she said don't um it's definitely not because of your content i was just so exhausted <laughs> so, so sorry and i looked over in the on the algorithm on the algorithm over inside Demio, and it did say this one watcher was just like two minutes and it was gone. I was thinking, okay, I'm glad I knew why that was the reason. It wasn't because of, of the webinar itself, it was just she was exhausted. <laughs> so. But it may actually lend into Tamara's point because the beginning is when you talk about who you are and the, you know, your family, what you do, and maybe there is some logic to this. So maybe uh, maybe when we're doing a webinar, it's about adjusting the point. So instead of, instead of trying to sell things through a webinar, which I don't know how well that's working anymore. That's my 10 cents. Mm -hmm. um, maybe what we should be doing with webinars is giving them lots and lots and lots and lots of value, lots of information, lots of support. And then it's like, hey, Here's where you can find me to get more of this. And we build that relationship up with them. Mm -hmm. Rather than trying to introduce ourselves and pitch our stuff and give them content all in the same box. Maybe it's the formula that's broken. What do you think? Maybe. That, that's very, very well could be. Because the main thing is they need to get to know you just to see you and speak with you and everything. And if you're going to be filing everything on them at once maybe that kind of turns them off or gets them distracted or <laughs> they don't they can't focus as much because there's just so much being piled on for them 
Well, and I mean, yeah, that could very well be it. But I, I mean, I think a lot about it. I think a lot about webinars because I really like video. Like I love being here with you, Andy. This is way too much fun for me. Um, but <laughs> webinars, yeah. I, I, I really do wonder how well they work only because of that formulaic thing. I mean, you have had some amazing success just reaching out and talking to people. Mm -hmm. right. That's a, that is a, a tactic that Tamara talks about, that I talk about, that Peter Shankman talks about. It, it's this concept of unmarketing. So our webinars, I mean, if we want to see success in webinars, maybe the, the whole idea is that we shift the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so this actually is going to lead me into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is your upcoming project, because yeah. you're actually going to be taking some of the feedback that you got running the webinar. I assume we're going to work in a few more. Just saying. And but you're using all of this to create the Coach Visibility University, right? Yes. New. It's just just made up today. The title. <laughs> Yeah, it just got its brand today. We're still working on it's got colors now, uh, but we're still working on it. But the Coach Visibility University, I love that because it really does speak to what you do. And exactly. and I love it. Uh, Tamara says that, yes, yes, the formula is broken because math and she do not get along. Uh, funny story, I don't math either. Wendy, do you math? No. We're know. not mathers here. We're musicians. We're business owners. No math here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I really do think that this formula is broken. So knowing that you've got this coach visibility university and knowing where where people are finding those strengths. So if you think about yourself as a business owner, what value do you get from a webinar? And, and really, when you're done, how do you feel? You mean after I had been the host of it? I had after I had actually run the webinar. How do I feel? Yeah, like uh, like you've got all this information and everything that you've learned from it. How do you feel that we can uh, we can then apply it to your program? Like, how do you think the people in the audience can apply it to what they're doing? Would you recommend a webinar to sell a product? Uh, I would recommend one to get them to know them, to get them to know what they what they do. Uh, and as far as if they want to sell a product, then that could be later. They could they could offer a Q and A later. Um, so they could invite them to their group, their Facebook or LinkedIn group, so that they can get to know them a little bit better. And then then selling their product would come a little bit later after they've gotten to know them more uh, better, more better. <laughs> it's gotten to know them and trust them and like them. Because people don't buy from people they don't they don't trust. So yeah. yes, and this is my whole point about webinars. The whole reason why to do this. people don't buy from people they don't trust. I mean, I won't buy fluffy slippers. I won't buy an uh, apple. I won't buy anything without somebody saying, "Yeah, this is where you need to go." Because I believe in it. Because there's so much bulk poop out on the internet. There really, really is. Um, so I think it's great that you're going to be incorporating all of this fantastic new knowledge into the Coach Visibility University, which I want to go to. Tamara wants to go to. Coaches out there, you you definitely want to go to this. Uh, I'm helping Wendy put it together. It's going to be so amazing. Uh, never mind the amazing logo I'm going to make. But I'm going to continue. We have an amazing question. I've said amazing about 12 times now. So we have an audience question. Yeah, that looks great. Just sitting on the on the um, on the monitor, Coach Visibility University. That's the first time I can actually see it. Doesn't it look fantastic? Ah, oh, I agree, Coach <laughs> Visibility University. Guys, I will keep you updated on Wendy's progress <laughs> with the CVU. Don't you worry. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've got a question here. Russell would like to know how do you provide lots of value without giving away everything. Mm, that is a good question. You just give them a little bit. <laughs> just give them a little step to do some actionable step so that they can actually go off and do it and implement it and get some kind of results and then come back to you for more. So I think the webinar, I could have done that. I should have just made it a little bit less <laughs> uh, content rich, I guess, so that they would be hungry to come back for. For more, but it, I think that 
I gave him so much that they're off doing it themselves. <laughs> and that is a trap that we can fall into. So I think that's a great question from Russell. Um, you have to balance giving them too much to not giving them all the keys to the farm, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you give them all the steps that they need, they're going to go and do it. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it's a lack of trust that makes them want to go and try to do it themselves. So we're kind of just back spinning into this circle. You have to build the trust or there's no point. Right. And right? That Without that trust, there's no point. So if if you were to, to go back, would you do... Uh, would you do webinars like you did again if you decide to do webinars? I, and I know I might have just totally derailed your ship. I know, I know, I'm horrible for that. Um, but would you want to do the same style of webinar now? I would tweak a little bit. Um, you know, they talk about you. You just say what you're supposed to do, and not necessarily how you do it. So I think I told them too much of how of how to do things. Um, and so if I told them more of what what to do so that this can happen without saying so much of how, a little bit of how, I think that would get them hungry and say, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? Well, this we have to do this, but I don't know how. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's true. And, and that, yes, if you're going to do a webinar and your webinar's goal is to sell something, then making them wonder how is going to be the most important part, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it just comes down to what the point of your webinar is. And it's the same thing that I teach. Well, it's it's about websites that convert, but same idea for webinars that convert. I might have to go make that worksheet now. Anyway, um, a, a website that converts is the same idea. It has to It has to do certain things. So if you want people to buy, you really need to want, to compel them to buy, right? That's the whole idea. Um, and, and I love it because Tamara, Tamara is bringing up a great point. So I really love that. How do you feel as a consumer when you watch webinars? What do you love? What do you hate? Love or hate? Then do you do the webinars with those thoughts in mind? I, I, I think she's getting right. She must be picking up what I'm putting down because we, we just talked about the formula that you use, introduce myself, tip one, tip two, special gift, special gift, special gift, tip three, right? So you're, you're using a very formulaic response. You said in most cases, you don't purchase from a webinar like that. Right. And you would be one of your ideal clients because you're a coach. Yes. We've had other people in the audience say that formula, formula is not working. So now think about it here for a second. When you are creating your webinars, you're creating your content, and as you're developing the rest of this Coach Visibility University, are you using what you know about your consumer being one to help shape that? Mm -hmm. that, that is definitely, that should be in the plan for sure. For sure. I know that, um, you know, watching webinars, if they have a lot of people, like case studies and testimonials and just stories of how other people have succeeded, that really, that is, it's like social proof. So that that is a really good concept to have. But since I was doing a, a, a webinar that was talking about a program that I hadn't done before, I didn't have any of those to share. So that that was what the um, the beta tester was supposed to supply, um, testimonials, case studies through that program. And then if I were gonna do a webinar after that, I would showcase those people to show what they can accomplish and what they, you know, can succeed in the program. So, yeah. So, did I answer the question right? <laughs> sure if I answered the question. <laughs> well, you did, but um, and I think this is something that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, business owners face is that they want to do these webinars. They feel that they should be doing them in certain formulaic uh, orders, but it's really hard to break free of that. Um, as Catherine says, Catherine actually would love to know how to keep out much of the how i mean <laughs> if you keep out the how the how is the value mm -hmm. so as soon as you remove the how you have no value so how do we remove the how without losing the value and that's what a lot of business owners are struggling with right now well i know the, the webinar that i did i showed them exactly how to change something on their profile um, and then how to just to do a few little things 
but it was definitely not the whole picture. So I think a little bit of the how is is good because they can really implement right there or right after the webinar is over. Uh, and then, so then that will motivate them to want to keep going and find out how to, how to actually to attract the clients through LinkedIn. You've got the profile already. So now what? <laughs> so that's, that's the value that you get initially, that first little piece of the, at the, you know, the very beginning. So, and then they'll say, okay, I want to know more. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's really the core. You, you want to get some value and even Catherine says it, you know, that's the, that's the genuine struggles. You want to give value, but you need to get something from it as well. So personally, I mean, just before we wrap up here, where I'm coming from is I really want to challenge you, Wendy, every other business owner out there who's running webinars right now to think outside of that formulaic box because you need to be able to give value. Mm -hmm. You need to get rid of the stuff that's not of any value because that's why they tune out or they sign out before you get to the part where you sell. But I, I also think that uh, as people hosting and running these webinars, we really need to think in a different structure. So rather than saying, here's all the things that you need desperately, but I'm not going to tell you how to do any of them. <laughs> why are we just trying to give them a little foot in the door and say, here, let me show you how to find your own holes. <laughs> Let me show you how to find out what's wrong and how to diagnose your issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to give you value. But then when it comes to doing it, well, who are you going to reach out to? Mm -hmm. So maybe as business owners, we just need to really challenge how we develop these webinar structures so that we can get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Maybe what do you think? Yes, definitely. Make the outline. So they definitely need the value, but there's no really no time to teach them everything. So you tell them, you do tell them how to do a lot. I thought I told them a lot, but there, there was a lot that I didn't tell them. So maybe they didn't realize there was more to know, more to learn. That's probably something that I could say. So after you get your profile all optimized and fixed up and everything, then this is then you start this messaging campaign with all the, the people and how to reach out to people, how to search for all the different, uh, your target market and everything. And so I thought maybe I said that too, but I'll have to look at it again. <laughs> well, Tamara brings up a great point. She says that she really loves the webinars that interact with the audience. Now you did do some of this, Wendy. You did. <laughs> I'll give you that. Um, yes, but apparently Chris Brogan does this really, really well. Now, so you get one specific step and then they hire you for your brain, not your information. Oh, right? I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think that's good too. Um, it, it's important to interact with your audience for more than one reason. Your audience also has more than one way to learn. This is, this is my little 10 cent round here. If you were to get me in a webinar and talk at me for an hour, I've retained nothing <laughs> um, talking to me. So audio, not how I learn. And my clients all know this. Uh, most of the people who know me know this. I have to write it down or it doesn't exist. Period. End of story. That's that's just how my brain works. So if we just do a visual, like an audio visual component, we're not getting anybody to think or interact, write things down. Are, are you getting all of the different types of learners out there engaged? Right. Yeah, you have to. You have to use all three types of learning um, methods. Right. So now we're getting somewhere, right? We figured out that uh, a lot of extra super fluffy stuff at the beginning, hmm, kind of boring. Okay, cool. We know that we need to give them the, the, the toe in to the giant pool, but not the whole pool. And they don't get all the fish, right? right. And we know that if we interact with them, we're going to be, they're going to be more inclined to purchase with us, right? So these are all the great things that you've learned uh, working through your webinar and the things that I've learned working through your webinar. Yay, living vicariously through other people. <laughs> but this is what I want to put out there to anybody out there watching this. If you're doing webinars, if you're one of those people out there who are trying to make this work, give these things some thought, right? Uh, Catherine herself, she would, she would like to actually show them 
how to do something like file act toss, which is, uh, it's awesome. If you don't know, Catherine Avery, she's amazing. Uh, productivity by design. Blah, blah. But um, the file act toss system that she has, it's amazing, but it's just one small component to the whole environment. So she said what she would do is she'd show that little piece. They, they get, like you said, hungry. Mm -hmm. And now they want that organization throughout the entire place. Right. Yeah. That's Same good. idea. I love that. I love that. So, mm -hmm. guys, thank you so much. I don't want to keep you here too much longer when I've already yapped seven minutes over your time because <laughs> aren't I awesome? Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed the thank you so, so much, Wendy Hatton, everybody, wendyhatton.com. And again, keep your eyes out for her Coach Visibility University coming soon. Um, and thank you to all of our wonderful watchers. We've had some great comments. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Russell. And everybody else who stopped in, said hi. If you're watching this, later drop your questions below i can always make sure they get to wendy or you know answer them myself and uh we really do appreciate you anything else you'd like to say to our wonderful audience i just think you're great oh. <laughs> i'm glad i found you <laughs> so you're awesome and so long. Too. <laughs> yeah so anybody wants to try out a webinar that's that's the i think that's the best thing is to just figure out what that one little piece that can just help your help your um, online your um, your uh, <laughs> clients or your potential clients to act on act upon implement and then be all motivated and they'll want to hear more and hear the rest of your system like you don't have to give them the whole thing <laughs> that's right so that's what I have that's my tip for the day and I think that's a great one. I think it is. And uh, hopefully Catherine Avery will use that when she develops her webinar because now other people want to see how to do file act toss in a webinar and just saying, gotta love that. And thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it, guys. Like, share, visit. We've got some other great things coming up. Art Costello, author of Expectation Therapy on Wednesday. We've got the pitch girl, Laura Allen, on Thursday. And if you know anybody who wants to get on one of these with me and have a little bit of blue hair powwow, send them my way. I have way too much fun. And I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.